us is a nine gene hereditary cancer susceptibility test. Uh, all nine genes on the panel are associated with increased risks for ovarian cancer and or uterine cancer. So this test is ideally uh, designed for a woman or an individual with a personal and or family history of ovarian and uterine cancer. This test was actually requested by our clients. We developed this test in response to a request that came in. We have our OVANEXT panel, which is a 23 gene panel for hereditary ovarian and uterine cancer, but clients were asking for a panel that was a little bit more focused, uh, and that's where we came up with GYN+. The nine genes that are on GYN+, are all associated with high risks. Um, they're well-characterized genes that are associated with well-delineated syndromes, so we know quite a bit about them. They've been studied for quite a while. The VUS rate is naturally lower since these genes have been tested for uh, quite a bit of time at this point, and there are medical management guidelines associated if a mutation is found in any one of the nine genes. You can break the nine genes into uh, four syndromes, basically. So there's BRCA1 and BRCA2, mutations in which are responsible for hereditary breast and ovarian cancer syndrome. Um, this is is an, definitely an important pair of genes to have on the panel because there is such a high risk of ovarian cancer associated, up to 40 to 60 percent lifetime risk, and it is one of the more common genes that is tested for in the hereditary cancer world. Um, the second category would be the Lynch syndrome genes, MLH1, MSH2, MSH6, PMS2, and EPCAM. Uh, so all five of those genes are associated with Lynch syndrome, and with Lynch syndrome you see increased risks for both ovarian and uterine cancers, specifically endometrial cancers. So their inclusion on the panel is definitely important. The third category and the fourth category are really just two syndromes with one gene each. There's leaf raumani syndrome associated with mutations in the TP53 gene and uh, P the P10 gene, which is um, associated with Cowden syndrome. Cowden syndrome has an increased risk for uterine cancer. In addition, it also has increased risks for breast cancer and thyroid cancer. TP53 mutations are not classically associated with gynecological cancers, but there is an increased risk for cancer overall with TP53 mutations, and there have been plenty of families, plenty of instances of gynecological cancers occurring with a TP53 mutation. So more than anything, we simply felt it would be negligent not to include TP53 on this panel. There are several uh, candidates for this test, ideally. Um, we say that anyone with ovarian cancer should at least consider this test. Uh, there are new recommendations out from the Society of Gynecologic Oncologists that say that any individual with ovarian cancer should have a family history taken and consider genetic counseling and genetic testing simply because the number of ovarian cancers that are attributable to hereditary causes is, is fairly high. Um, it doesn't mean everyone with ovarian cancer should definitely have GYN plus done, but it should at least be considered. Uh, same for an individual with an early onset uterine or endometrial cancer, early onset meaning before age 50. Um, we know that early onset cancers are more likely to be hereditary, and so testing several of these different genes that are associated with hereditary uterine cancer could be helpful. Uh, another possible candidate for GYN Plus is an individual whose family history looks both BRCA-ish and Lynch-ish. So um, either on the same side of the family or on opposite sides of the family, it looks like it could be a BRCA mutation or it could be Lynch syndrome. And there are a lot of ways that those phenotypes might overlap, so GYN Plus is a perfect way to test for both those syndromes at the same time in a cost and time efficient manner. So I think GYN Plus is going to appear appeal to a lot of physicians and genetic counselors who have been doing testing for BRCA and Lynch syndrome for quite a while, being able to have one panel that will test for both. Um, but I think another crucial part is that a lot of OBGYNs, gynecologic oncologists, other physicians are familiar with BRCA testing and they've been doing BRCA testing for quite a while and whenever there's a patient with a personal or family history of ovarian cancer, they're going straight to BRCA. Well, that's great, but obviously BRCA does not account for every hereditary ovarian cancer. And by adding other genes to BRCA, what we have found at Ambry is that we can increase our diagnostic yield by 64%. So adding genes 
2 testing other than BRCA1 and 2 definitely allows us to identify women with a hereditary susceptibility that would have been completely missed otherwise. I was very happy when Ambry decided to release GYN+. It was something that had been on uh, my wish list for quite a while because it is a panel that allows shorter turnaround time, lower VUS rate, but it still gives answers, more answers than if you were to do single gene testing, because it is nine genes that have a high risk of ovarian and uterine cancers. You're going to find people with mutations that you would have missed if you had just done single gene testing, but you're not necessarily um, taking that broad approach. It allows a specific targeted approach while still being in one nice panel that has been specifically designed for it with that low turnaround time and the fact that Ambry has low VUS rates associated with these genes, so the VUS rate for the panel in general is expected to be low, those are all fairly unique features.